Hello, welcome to Skull RPG Podcast. My name is Dwight Skull. My name is Jacob Skull. And today we're going to teach you how to tell, tell your, your story. story. So Dwight, our last couple episodes have been had a faction in, a faction or two in it. So let's, I think we should talk about how to make proper factions. Sure. Uh, factions are kind of important because obviously conflict is primarily between two different parties or two different groups. So yeah. having a faction... Um, I mean, only one faction is kind of weird because even then you'd have to splinter the faction into internal factions, which still gets you what you need. So um, you'll find that in most games you're going to end up having factions, whether you use it or not, know it or not. But the best thing you can do is plan for it, and here's how you would do that. So one of the things I'm going to pitch right now is uh, actually is a really cool book called the Dracula, Dracula Dossier from... Knights Black Agents. It's a supplement to that. It's by a guy named Kenneth Height. He used to work on Believe on D&D 2.0 back in the day, worked underneath Gary Gygax, and then mm-hmm. subsequently branched off. And so he has his own publishing company. You can go to Drive Through RPG and look up Dracula Dossier, and I think you pick it up there. I kickstarted it, so I don't know exactly how much it costs. That said, what he does in there is this really cool idea where he has... Um, Three different factions. Now, the whole thing's centered around Dracula, like Bram Stoker's Dracula, the book, Bram Stoker's Dracula. The entire concept is, what if Bram Stoker's Dracula, the book, was actually a after-action field report from an an agent, i.e. Jonathan Harker? Yeah. So... And then it's been modified and redacted enough so that it's uh, it was able to be released to the public as a work of fiction, but in reality, it's not. Hence why Dracula doesn't die at the end of the book, because you just shoot him. Right. Well, actually, he calls out a lot of inconsistencies in Bram Stoker's Dracula, and he says, well, this actually reeks of an after-action report and reeks of a conspiracy. Mm-hmm. And so what he does is he creates a, a faction that is Dracula is vying for power. And if you read the book or watch any of the movies based on Bram Stoker's Dracula, even the really bad ones, there's a common theme where Dracula leaves Transylvania and comes to e- England to create a dynasty here in England. Yeah, um, he's leaving his dynasty to go create more Dracula, to more vampires. Right, because he's kind of played out. Everyone knows how to get rid of him in Transylvania, Romania. So he's got to leave to a place that doesn't believe in him so he can actually do nefarious things. So that's one group, is the group that's being directly controlled in some way, shape, or form by Dracula. Another group that he has is an English spy agency where they're trying to capture Dracula and use him for their own purposes because wouldn't it be great if you had an undead killing machine and wouldn't it be great if he could somehow turn one of your guys into an undead killing machine without the mind control aspect, and then you can have your own vampires at your control? Mm-hmm. Kind of like the Cold War of the nineteen of like the eighteen nineties, <laughs> in some ways. Then he has another faction, which is the Germans, because Doctor Van Helsing comes from Germany. It's kind of the German faction of that, and you could add other factions based on whether you know how many other countries you want to get involved. Regardless, there's your factions. You have Dracula doing his own thing. You have governments doing their own thing and what he did with this book which was absolutely amazing is he took all the cast of characters that you if you've read the book dracula which i highly recommend it's a great book um there's a ton of characters already built into that Mm -hmm. and so what you have happening there is he takes all of them and he just says instead of saying van helsing is with the german spy agency and harker's with the english spy agency what he does is he says okay here's a block If Van Helsing is working for Dracula, it looks like this. If Van Helsing's working for the Germans, it looks like this. If Van Helsing's working with the English, it looks like this. And he does that for everybody, for Mina, for Arthur, for literally everybody in the entire thing. Yeah. And so you what... Okay, now that sounds crazy. So let's just bring it down to your game, okay? So what I would do is I would come up with a faction list, right? So you could have... um, Let's just create a quick thing here. Um, You have a lich who is influencing people, kind of like a vampire, but a lich who's influencing people. And you have cultists who are worshiping or corrupted by this lich king, and they're trying to raise up some sort of like, you know, hell on earth, lich god to come into our plane of existence and, you know, convert the, you know, the infidels. 
and then maybe you have another good kingdom and this kingdom is trying to make sure that you know that doesn't happen and so you have like the kingdom of where most people would be but then you could have like another subversive group inside of that kingdom maybe you have a mage guild and the mage guild look at things and they're like you know actually we could they would be really good if we knew how these liches actually worked because then we could become liches without being owned by those liches because who doesn't want to live forever i mean cue the queen song but i mean mm -hmm. like most people honestly but the, <laughs> the so you have like three three groups right there you have a group of fanatics trying to do the unthinkable you have a group of normal people who are trying to put down this re this other thing but then you have a group inside of the normal people who are basically using their own little nefarious things to try to take the power away from one group but in reality just to become the next version of that group and so that's like three three factions right there and then you can have some mystery and intrigue in that by taking any of your npcs and aligning them however you'd like um, or if you don't want to align them right away, you could actually just do a quick blurb of, you know, if they did follow this, they would act like this. If they followed this other one, they would act like this. And then if you make it similar enough, you could actually do a nice big reveal or a twist or something where one of them looks like they're working for the king, but in reality, they're a cultist or reality, they're a mage, you know, fighting yeah. against the system. Because you're going to have different people inside other factions spying on those factions. So... The cultists are going to have people with the king to know what the king's wanting to do to them. And likewise, the reverse. And the mages are everywhere. Yeah, it's and, and that's exactly what you have is like a lot of... Um, so if you're playing like a spy game, it lends really well to it. But if you're not playing a spy game, another reason why you want some really good written factions is so that you can actually cause a little bit of conflict or at least have a backdrop of characters who are maybe always getting in the player's way. Because one thing I really don't like is that in a lot of ways... Players either run around as gods or mm -hmm. they run around as nothing. Mm -hmm. And I like to do the medium. So I like to, you know, let them level up as gods and think they're godlike. But then I like to throw in a faction or a group of people that are maybe working against them or things of that nature. And that really works well because you have a group of people that are about the same level as them at all times because there's a whole organization of them. And then you can kind of create a, a little bit of conflict there or at least have some of their plans go awry because you have another thing, like another group of people actively working against them. Mm -hmm. And then you can do a, a, a nice deal where you're foreshadowing certain things where it's like, that shouldn't have gone that way. Or, you know, you start seeing people over and over and over again. You start realizing maybe I'm being followed. Maybe we're being watched. And then, you know, you can kind of stoke up some paranoia. So, yeah. Anyway, that's exactly what I would do for factions. It's um, not that hard to do, but... I don't just like to throw out like here's the 17 guilds because it's just too much. I'd rather only have like maybe three to four different factions at any time and each one of those should have their own different agenda that's um, maybe not obvious to the players at the beginning but very obvious to you as the game master slash storyteller. Hey, thanks for listening. And for more resources, please go to SkullRPG.com.